Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross and has given to us his message of reconciliation. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be among us. The peace of the Lord. It's good to welcome you to this act of worship for Remembrance Sunday from the Keredigian Circuit of the Methodist Church. If you are joining us via the live Facebook on Sunday the 8th of November, we will be sharing with others around the country at 11 o'clock for two minutes of silence. If you're logged into this service at another time, then as part of the service, you will also share in two minutes of silence at the same point in the service. Our prayer is that we will all remember, lest we forget, and we will all commit ourselves to work for a world in which peace reigns. As I prepared to lead this service, I selected a number of items. A red poppy. A red poppy, which we are all familiar with as a symbol of remembrance for members of the armed forces who died in war, their families, and the important work that the British Legion continues to do. A white poppy. Uh, to remind us of all, including civilians, who have died at times of war, and the need to work for peace. At a more personal level, I selected a letter sent from the chaplain during the First World War in response to inquiries made by his parents about my grandfather. He was 19 at the time and missing, presumed dead, during the Battle of Ypres in August 1917. Along with his medal, with his name inscribed on the etch, The content of that letter is far too graphic to read to out today. Let us remember, lest we forget. Our opening hymn was recorded at a time when we were able to gather and sing together in worship at St Paul's in the Keridigian circuit. It is Songs of Fellowship, number 1565 and recognises that our current days are far from straightforward.
we share in our prayers of adoration and confession. Gracious and eternal God, ever present in the vastness of the universe, in the myriad of stars, in the heavens and in the earth, ever present, creating and recreating, we adore you. Ever present, but not contained, restricted or confined to space or time, ever present in each moment, in each place, in each happening, we adore you. Ever present in each moment of encounter and conversation, present in the activity and the stillness, present in the noise and the silence, present whether noticed or not, whether acknowledged or ignored, ever present God, creating and recreating, we adore you. Ever present to be encountered in love and compassion, we worship you with a sense of awe and a sense of wonder. Because you are ever-present, we become aware that our lives have not always been lived in the light of your presence. We have acted as though you were not there, as though you did not care, as though it did not matter. We have failed to respond to your presence and your image in the other person. We have used words cheaply or harshly, and have wounded or crushed another person. We have failed to speak up and act out, of in, act out against injustice. ever-present God, just as your presence reveals our sinfulness, so may your presence forgive, heal, and enable us to reflect your presence in all that we do or say. Amen. Our Old Testament reading comes from the book of Jeremiah. Through the prophet, God speaks of the perversity of the nation and how it fails to heed God's ways. All of this results in a false and shallow peace. Jeremiah chapter 8, verses 4 to 11. The reading is taken from Jeremiah chapter 8, verses 4 to 11. Reading from the New Revised Standard Version. You shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, When people fall, do they not get up again? If they go astray, do they not turn back? Why then has this people turned away in perpetual backsliding? They have held fast to deceit, they have refused to return. I have given heed and listened, but they do not speak honestly. No one repents of wickedness, saying, What have I done? All of them turn to their own course, like a horse plunging headlong into battle. Even the stork in the heavens knows its time, 
and the turtle dove, swallow and crane, observe the time of their coming. But my people do not know the ordinance of the Lord. How can you say, we are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us, when in fact the false pen of the scribes has made it into a lie? The wise shall be put to shame. They shall be dismayed and taken. Since they have rejected the word of the Lord, what wisdom is in them? Therefore I will give their wives to others and their fields to conquerors, because from the least to the greatest, everyone is greedy for unjust gain. From prophet to priest, everyone deals falsely. They have treated the wound of my people carelessly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Thanks be to God for this reading from his word. Amen. Our gospel reading comes from Luke. Jesus is nearing Jerusalem and he glimpses the city. And this is how he responds. Luke chapter 19, verses 41 to 44. Jesus weeps over Jerusalem. Luke chapter 19, verses 41 to 44. As he came near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, If you, even you, had only recognised on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. Indeed, the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up ramparts around you and surround you and hem you in on every side. They will crush you to the ground, you and your children within you. They will not leave within you one stone upon another because you did not recognise the time of your visitation from God. I sit here today, troubled in heart, mind and spirit, because we live in a world that seems to know little or no peace. We remember those men and women who have made the ultimate sacrifice and had their lives taken in war. And some sharing this service today will have called to mind the faces of loved ones. For 11 years, I served as chair of district for Chester and Stoke-on-Trent in the Methodist Church, recalling the honour and the pride that Stoke-on-Trent had when that river of ceramic pottery, poppies, each made in the city of Stoke-on-Trent, was used to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the First World War. They became iconic, each a life each a soldier, someone's child, someone's sibling, someone's parent. Behind each ceramic poppy, a human story of loss and pain and grief. There was also a great effort to unearth those human stories from diaries, letters and records because we need to humanise the consequences of war, lest we forget. Yet, in over a hundred years since the outbreak of World War I, there have only been two years, 1968 and 2016, when a British Armed Forces personnel didn't lose their life as a result of a medal-earning operation. Government speak for a war or a conflict. We need to humanise the statistics. My maternal grandfather was presumed dead on the 14th of August 1917 after going over the top and shot in the face at Ypres 
aged 19. He hadn't died, but for three days was unaccounted for before being taken prisoner of war for 16 months. I remember him and his disfigured face. My mother remembers to this day the nightmares and the rages he was tormented with and that traumatised him for the rest of his life. She remembers the attempts he made to take his own life as he struggled with the inner torment. A part of my history, a human story. Let us remember, lest we forget. And my, my godmother was a World War II widow, married just a week before her husband went to war, and the troop ship, ship was torpedoed and his life was taken. She could never bring herself to marry again, despite having a very special close friendship that ordinarily would have led to marriage. We have a few of her personal letters between her and her husband that we can't read as that feels intrusive, but neither can we throw them away. A human story. Let us remember, lest we forget. I also recall a few years ago, the annual service on the gas boiler was being done in the first week of November by a man who told me how on Remembrance Sunday he will be standing in silence by a memorial as the name of a friend and a fellow soldier who was killed in Afghanistan when serving there will be read out. He also spoke of the difficulty he and others had and still have in settling back into civilian life. A human story. To these stories must be added the personal stories of many of you listening to this service. Let us remember, lest we forget. God speaks through the prophet Jeremiah. You have treated the wound of my people carelessly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Jesus in Luke's gospel is recorded as turning the corner and seeing Jerusalem and saying, if you, even you, had only recognised on this day the things that make for peace. Or as one translator puts it, would that even today, you knew the things that make for peace. I sense those words from the book of Jeremiah and from Luke's gospel still reflect the heart and the longing of God for our day and our generation. Despite all our efforts, all the cost, all the lives, we still lack, as a world, the peace we long for. In the Beatitudes, Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers. What does it mean for each of us to be a peacemaker? Probably one of the most fraught questions to answer. I believe that the beginning of the answer lies in regaining that biblical conviction that in the eyes and heart of God, creation is good. And humankind is made in the image and likeness of God. That is where I believe we need to begin. Seeing and treating creation as God's good, beautiful and amazing gift to all humankind. Not just to some, not just to the powerful, not just to the rich, but to all. To be treasured, respected, cared for and shared rather than fought over, exploited and raped for the benefit of the few. Seeing and treating each other and every human being as being made in the image and likeness of God. 
when I look into the eyes of a friend, a stranger, a refugee, a troubled or tormented soul, I am looking through a window into the heart of God. When I begin to do that, I can no longer regard others as enemies, but as sisters and brothers whose welfare and well-being is at the heart of God's concern. Is this the kind of world you and I desire? Is the world that we want really a world of harmony and peace in ourselves, in our relationships with others, in family, in cities, in and between nations? And does not our true freedom mean choosing ways in which this world that are guided by love and the lead to the good of all and the exploitation of none. But is this the world in which we lit, live? Sadly not. There is violence, division, disagreement, war and growing fear. Jesus still says to our world and to us, would that even today you knew the things that make for peace. Do we let ourselves be guided by idols, by selfishness, self-interest and prejudice? We can continue to perfect the weapons. Our conscience has been dulled by the rhetoric of fear and we marshal our ideas to justify ourselves. Today, as we remember those lost in war and conflict, over the last hundred plus years, and as we look at the news emanating from around the world and the masses of humanity fleeing their homes in fear, I ask the question, is it possible to walk the path of peace? Is it possible to be peacemakers and thereby blessed in the eyes of God? I want to say yes. And strangely, my yes takes me to a place that on the surface is a place of utter violence and injustice. It takes me to the cross. In the words of Pope Francis, how I wish that all men and women of goodwill would look to the cross, if only for a moment. There we can see God's reply. Violence is not answered with violence. Death is not answered with the language of death. In the silence of the cross, the uproar of weapons ceases and the language of reconciliation, forgiveness, dialogue and peace is spoken. He goes on to say, May the noise of weapons cease. War always marks the failure of peace. It is always a defeat for humanity. Forgiveness, dialogue, reconciliation. These are the words of peace in beloved Syria, in the Middle East, in all the world. Today, as a nation, we remember lest we forget. Part of our remembering, if it is to truly honour the sacrifice and the lost, must be recommitment of ourselves and to invest in the task of praying and working for peace and justice for all people. Let us all become in every place, men and women, of reconciliation and peace. Then we will be the blessed of God. Amen. We join in the National Act of Remembrance, using words that will be used across the nations of the United Kingdom. They 
shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. When you go home, Tell them of us and say, For your tomorrow we gave our today. Let us commit ourselves to the ways of peace. The hymn make me a channel of your peace, based on words of St Francis, was recorded at St Paul's in the Keridigian circuit when we were able to meet together and is led by the musicians, singers and congregation of St Paul's. 
it leads us into a time of prayer. Make me a channel of your peace. prayers of intercession are an adaption of prayers written by Catherine Baxter for the Worship's Word website. There is a response after the words, within our darkest night, you are invited to respond, let your light shine. After the words, within our darkest night, the response, let your light shine. Let us pray. God of all creation, you hold the depths of the earth in your hands. You are closer to us than the air we breathe. Fill our souls with your wonderful love and light. Give us strength and courage to reflect that love and light in the world. Let us never shrink back from who we are in you or hide our light inside ourselves. Renew in us a sense of joy, painting the dark shadows around us with your light, your love and your salvation. Hear us today as we pray for a world too often darkened by hatred, evil, power and greed. Within our darkest night, let your light shine. God of power and might, your broken world cries out from the depths, a world dominated by the darkness of war, terror, suffering and pain. We think of the ongoing and deepening conflicts around our world. We share the pain and the anguish of those who have had to flee from their homes countries and livelihoods, who risk their lives desperate for a new start free from fear and war. May they see your light, feel your strength and power, and know the truth of your promise that we shall not be overcome by the dark shadows of life or the darkness of human nature. Within our darkest night, let your light shine. 
God of compassion and grace, we share with you our love and concern for people in a dark place today. We have on our hearts the friends and loved ones. We have on our hearts the victims of violence and hatred. We pray that they will find your strength in the compassion and love of those around them. We pray for tolerance in our society. We pray for all who are suffering from anti-Islamic hate crimes. We pray for Jewish people suffering hatred and prejudice. We pray for those caught up in acts of violence. Let your light shine through the darkness of all their pain and their suffering. Within our darkest night, let your light shine. God of life, we ask for your healing power on those who are enduring pain and illness. We especially think of suffering from COVID-19 and all those we name quietly in our hearts. We share the grief of people close to us who have recently lost loved ones. We especially think of those who have lost their lives fleeing from conflict as refugees. We remember that as we weep with the grieving, we also embrace the joy of signs of new life. We know your everlasting light shines with us in moments of great sadness and great joy. Within our darkest night, let your light shine. God of love and hope, renew in us a deeper sense of who we are in you. Help us to be aware of your presence each and every day. Make us instruments of love and praise. May our words, actions and lives be living examples of your forgiving, healing, life-giving love. Amen. We draw all our prayers together in the prayer of Jesus. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Amen. Paul feels him, go peacefully in gentleness, acts as a sending out and a blessing him.
Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross and has given to us his message of reconciliation. Go in peace. We go in Christ's name to share his peace. Lead us from death to life, from falsehood to truth. Lead us from despair to hope, from fear to trust. Lead us from hatred to love, from war to peace. The peace of the Lord be among us and flow from us into the world. The peace of the Lord.